Hi everyone, welcome to Northern Ag TV. While there are two weeks left for Congress to pass a budget to avoid a government shutdown, some Farm Bureau leaders have said that at this point, a continuing resolution is likely necessary, but that the two chambers are at a standstill. Emily Buckman, Director of Government Affairs, said that to date, the House has passed a handful of individual funding bills and the Senate has not passed any. Time is limited for the rest of the year to take up legislation, which is why it's imperative that Congress funds the federal government beyond September 30th so that we avoid a government shutdown and allow for work on other efforts, including passage of a new farm bill. Updating the farm safety net to help farmers manage risk is necessary for America's food supply. Concerns for the supply chain continue as the possibility of a port strike lingers. Due to conflicts over wage increases and port automation, Similar to the Farm Bill, the contract between the International Longshoremen's Association and the United States Maritime Alliance expires the 30th of September. If the strike takes effect October 1st, it could disrupt almost $4 billion of trade per day due to the fact that the East Coast and Gulf Coast ports moved 43% of United States imports. Well, good things are happening for Montana agriculture. The University of Montana Western recently received a $500,000 grant from AgWest Farm Credit for their farm and ranch management degree. The goal of the degree is to provide students with financial management, technology, and sustainable practice skills to prepare them to operate a farm or ranch successfully. As the school develops the program, they are looking for a leader to take on the head role of the farm and ranch management degree. We'll be back with the markets right after this. From the beginning, we've worked closely with farmers. BNSF's ties to the agricultural community go back 175 years. Together, we've innovated to make the U.S. agriculture supply chain one of the most efficient and productive in the world. Our strong relationship powers BNSF still today and helps us move the nation like no one else can. At BNSF, we move the nation for you. Well, if you don't have plans for this weekend, you should consider going down to Dillon. This weekend, Saturday at 10 a.m. is the Hoofing It for Hunger Run. Montana Farm Bureau's Young Farmer and Ranchers program has organized this race to provide funding for the Montana Food Bank Network. Montana Farm Bureau says that just $1 will provide five meals for a family in need. And a quick thank you to all the truckers out there keeping our agricultural business moving. In honor of National Truck Driver Week, here are some statistics. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, trucks are responsible for 83% of the ag freight movements by tonnage and account for 56% of ag freight ton miles. And even grains, which frequently move long distances by rail and barge, have greater than 70% of tonnage moved by truck. Well, on to your markets. Earlier in the week, traders decided not to wait to see what cash cattle trade did and went ahead and bought aggressively into the futures market. However, traders became cautious as we neared the noon hour during Wednesday's session and they will likely continue to as we get closer to the cattle on feed report. After steady buying early on, traders might have reduced some of the pressure on cash cattle to allow for higher bids this week, but most of the trade may be delayed until after this week's report. Box beef prices did not provide much support to the market either, choice cuts lower at about 303 and a half. Demand for spring calves was very good at the Miles City Livestock Commission as several buyers showed interest in lightweight calves. Yearling heifers sold generally steady on offerings under 850 pounds. Heifers over 850 pounds brought a dollar to four dollars higher. The majority of those heavy eight weight heifers brought in around 221 to 224. A few more lightweight steers sold in Riverton this week with the four to four and a half pounders at 350 to 359 and the big bulk of the 420 pound heifers at 313. For a short period of time on Wednesday, the wheat contracts corrected from earlier losses, but closed mostly lower to end the session. With world production issues still a concern to traders, markets will likely focus on U.S. exports, which have been running a little ahead of last year's pace. Early Plains wheat drilling is fully underway, but I can guarantee that some farmers may be getting a little break to step out of the tractor with these wetter conditions. Well, that's going to do it for the Daily Ag Report on Northern Ag TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grace McDonald.